Welcome, Twinkle from Australia. Good to have you with us. Um, right, we're equipping Tuesday. This is this is session number four, Meryl. So, uh, Meryl, thank you, Meryl. You are uh, you are a blessing to me. I'm already unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Unmuted. So thank I've shared the screen, Meryl. I've shared the screen, so um, you're. Oh, thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Um, as we start today's session, to me, this is a very pivotal understanding of our human condition and how we are going to be able to minister to broken people. Um, and this, this session is a build on the other session. So, you know, if you've just come in for the first time into this session, um, it might be uh, a, a bit difficult if you haven't followed the others, but it is a build on those. And we just pray for the Holy Spirit to give us understanding um, of this simple principle that we will be able to be Jesus' hands and feet. Paul, thank you for your prayer. I think it was wonderful. Bless you. So I'm just going to share my screen here. And I share, and I'm going to, uh, oops, get this out of the way. Come on, out of the way, so I can do slideshow. There we are. Okay. Parabakashanda from the beginning. Come on. There we are. Okay. Thank you, Father. I just want to move something else out of the way over here. Bless you. Right. So it's all in the mind. And I've titled this, but which one? And as you can have gleaned from the other teachings, we got a subconscious mind and we have a conscious mind, subconscious, unconscious. And it's all in the mind. And we're going to look at a lot of scriptures. And I want to start with asking you a question. Although we know nothing is impossible for our father, what is the one thing he will not do while we are here on planet Earth? And just think about that. And as we go on, I can ask the question, think about who he's responsible for. What we eat and drink. Is it you? Is it God? When you go to bed, is it you? Is it God? Exercising. What we think. And you can see there is a certain responsibility that we have. And when we look at it, here on planet Earth, we have been given a free will. And he will not override your free will. We have to choose how we use it. Now, we have the Holy Spirit who is with us to prompt us, to guide us. But the ultimate choice here of our free will is us. And when we are praying for people, we can't pray for their free will to be overwritten. So we have to pray when we are ministering to people in a specific way where they can choose with their own free will to do it God's way. So we need to choose how we use our free will. And we have a problem with our thinking. And we all, at some stage, have experienced negative thoughts, uh, 
yet as born again believers we know who we are but we still have these negative thoughts that keep coming up and this is what the scripture says but he must ask in faith without doubting because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind that man should not expect to receive anything from the lord he is double-minded unstable in all his ways now generally when we think about that we think about our conscious mind what we call our working memory but what about your unconscious subconscious mind what if that has got a different unresolved issue in it you have this doubting that comes yet we know so here's another word uh, uh, from proverbs 23 verse 7 for as he thinks in his heart so is he now remember that original diagram in lesson two where i said the heart was it was right down here in the subconscious unconscious and that word heart is nefesh or the soul and we have a corresponding scripture in the new covenant for out of the overflow of the heart the mouth speaks and there the word heart is cardia which is familiar to us which means our soul and our mind so from the heart things are flowing not from what we understand in the upper working memory now there are two words that i want to just reflect on diseases and illnesses and i for this talk want to separate them into two different ideas i know that they are interchangeable and through the later slides you will see that they people are using the word diseases and illnesses uh, in both categories but i want to just look at how i would define a disease and how i define an illness so this is from the internet disease a disorder of structure or function in a human animal or plant especially one that produces specific symptoms or that affects a specific location and is not simply a direct result of physical injury so i would like to use the idea of diseases like measles these like covid 19 these things that uh, impact our body and causes um, disease uh, malfunction in the body uh, you know we have the measles we have what's the smallpox and all those that is how i would like to define diseases an illness i would like to look at it this way and this is also from the internet a condition in which the body or mind now you can see here the mind is coming into the question is harm because an organ or part is unable to work as it usually does which includes a mental condition and i want to suggest something that the part could also be our heart and our heart as we know the scripture and i've used it a number of times is deceitful above all things we also talk about psychosomatic illnesses and the word psycho is the mind soma is the body it's a physical illness or condition caused or aggravated by a mental factor such as an internal conflict or stress relating to the interaction of mind and body so here we are seeing the impact of thinking and its relationship to the body and we call that a psychosomatic psalm 103 verses 2 to 4 says the following 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his kind deeds, who forgives all our iniquity, who heals all our diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with loving devotion and compassion. And the word in the Hebrew there is tachelu, to suffer, to be sick, to be diseased. And I would like to suggest to us that we think of these like COVID-19, measles, mumps, and all the other diseases that we can be infected with. So the impact of thinking on our health. Now we're gonna be looking at a little bit of scientific research here. And this is from Dr. Caroline Leaf, Switch on Your Brain. And in her book, she quotes on page 33, research so shows that 75 to 98% of mental, physical, and behavioral illnesses come from one's thought life. Now that's a pretty high percentage. And again, she uses the word illnesses, which I like. If we go to Healing Begins with Sanctification of the Heart by Dr. M.K. Stradom. And by the way, this book is available free on the internet. If you download it, it'll probably take you a year to read. It's about 800 plus pages and it's quite detailed, but it talks about the same thing. On a cover, she says, in the latest cutting edge medical research, 87 to 95% of all diseases have been traced back to what goes on in your thought life. And um, in, I didn't get the page, I didn't write the page down, but in the book, she says, I am going to show you how your thoughts and the things that you meditate on long term cause biological manifestation in the form of disease in your body. I would prefer the word illness there for this talk, but that's her quote. I want to get back to where this all started for me, and it's a book, a more excellent way, teaching on the spiritual Roots of Disease by Pastor Henry Wright. And those two previous authors, Dr. Stradium and Caroline Leaf, have referred to him in their subsequent work. So this is the original work, and I still use this a lot in the work that I do today. And in his book, he says this. It wasn't that he, and he's referring to God, could not heal. It was that we had to become sanctified in certain areas of our lives before he, God, would heal. So there's a sanctification process that needs to be taken or followed through so that we can be healed. And as I go on, not the next lecture, but the one after this, we will start looking how I implement that sanctification process that people can get healed. Diseases in our lives can result from a separation from him and his word in specific areas of our life. And that's from verse 18. A page 18, sorry. Right. This is also from his book, and he says, spiritual rooted diseases is a result of separation on three levels. A separation from God and his word and his love. And a lot of people I work feel that God does not love them, or they feel bad that God is unable to love them. And these are born again people. 
Secondly, a separation from self. This is when you start criticizing yourself. When you condemn yourself, um, I have this all the time. These people will say, ah, oh, I was so stupid. Why did I do that? And why we are carrying these negative narratives in our heart, they cause diseases or illnesses, and that needs to be sanctified. And there's a separation from others. And this is very, very important when we've got judgments, resentments, bitternesses to what people have done. Um, our parents. We all came into this world with two parents. Sometimes our parents were not together. And that within the child causes disruption. And deep in the heart, there is this hurt that needs to be sanctified. And there's a specific way that it needs to be sanctified. So I'm going to read a little bit out of Pastor Wright's book from pages 23 to 24. So I'm just opening the pages now. Uh, just bear with me. Here we go. And this is a quote from something that he personally experienced. It's a test me. Um, he had been ministering in a church. And he starts, the next morning, they brought a lady to me privately that had cancer of the lung and cancer of the bone. She had been to all the doctors and had all the bone scans and x-rays. She was the mother of two children. Because I knew the spiritual root of her disease, I just kind of laid it out. This is your disease. This is what I see. It took about three seconds and she was bawling like a baby. I had touched her pain. I had touched her spiritual dynamics. God opened up with the sermon and I put my hand right on the thing that had been festering for years, causing eventual destru destruction of the two centuries of her immune system that protect us from cancer called antioconogenes. When these enzymes are destroyed in our body, the cell is compromised and cancer cell mitosis can begin at any time. I told her, I don't know what God is going to do, but I do know you are going to have to get right with God in this area of your life. She said, Pastor, I have known that all the time, but I just couldn't get there. I just couldn't get over it. I said, would you like to go there and get over it? She said, yes. I led her into a place before the Lord, before the Father, a place of soul searching, a place of repentance, a place of getting right with God. I just ministered to her and broke the power of the spirit of death, the power of cancer, and commanded its power to be broken. 30 days later, I got a phone call. She had been back to the doctor, had bone scans and x-rays. There was no evidence of lung cancer and bone cancer. And when I read that, it really dawned on me a number of things. And it's from that point that I am now ministering and counseling. I want to just talk specifically about 
the root of asthma, and then I'll give you my personal testimony here. So in his book, and you'll find it in um, Dr. Stradom's book as well, a fear, anxiety of abandonment resulting and resulting insecurities. So that's the spiritual root. So you've got somebody with asthma, just start thinking about this fear of anxiety, fear and anxiety of abandonment and resulting insecurities. And you can start ministering into that. And this is what has been observed from medical journals, that the hypothalamus gland, now the hypothalamus gland in the brain is part of the limbic brain, which is subconscious, unconscious. It is the control center of your whole endocrine system. And it is impacted by every thought you think, good ones and bad ones. So the hypothalamus gland, when it senses fear and anxiety, causes a hormone called ACTH to be, dis, uh, be secreted. This hormone goes into the bloodstream and docks at a receptor cell in the avioli, which produces stiffening or that tightness in the chest. So, oh, let me just see what the next page says. Right. Um, before I do that, I'm going to just share my testimony. I'm just going to stop share there for the moment and share this. So, when I was born, um, the doctor, this is what my mom told me, um, was drunk. Uh, she had what we would call preeclampsia or a panic attack. And I was born and there was a lot going on. And I was left on the side while they tried to uh, manage and call my mom. I was then removed and put into a nursery and only brought to my mom 24 hours later. This had a vast impact on my life. At age three, I was diagnosed with asthma. And it was an ongoing condition that deteriorated more and more as I got older. Obviously, I was not saved then, and I was doing all sorts of Eastern type of things to be able to overcome this condition that I had. Um, many occasions when mar married, Mom, Margie had to rush me to hospital so that they could give me something to open my lungs. I was so allergic that if I walked past grass, my chest would close up. When they did allergy tests on me, I tested positive to everything you could think. Around about age 40, I was on three types of medication daily. I could not survive without my medication. And I remember at that time coming to a resigned conclusion that I would not ever be healed. I gave up. I said, this is how I'm going to be. And I still remember the thought, this is how I'm going to die. Just shortly after that, at age 40, we came to know the Lord. And thus a journey began. It the process that I went through, I used to help people. And obviously, I did a lot of this journey just with the Lord and myself. I didn't have anybody to guide me to teach the things that I'm teaching you. I had to learn them. And today, uh, 15 years later, I am completely and totally asthma free. In all the healings that you were having in church, I never actually ever went up to the prayer line for asthma. But I did work on these internal experiences and those experiences 
of what I experienced in that first 24 hours after being born. And what's quite interesting when I studied systemic family therapy, um, there was attachment theory. And uh, in the attachment theory by John Bowlby, he talks about the conditions that are observed of children when they are uh, separated from their mothers for prolonged time. And he, as he spoke about the conditions, they first do this, then they do that, and then they feel that, and then they do that, and then that. I said, I know that. That's exactly what I did. But the Lord had healed me, and today I am totally, completely asthma free. And it was working on all these resentments, all these hurts, all the bitternesses, working on that fear, obviously bringing Lord in, using prayer, and to get the healing so that the Lord could do what he always wanted to do, to restore me. So we're going to go on a little bit here and continue with the screen share. Uh, that one. So scripture encourages us to be proactive in our thinking. And I've just quoted a lot of scripture because uh, it's, it's important that the Lord has right from the beginning of time and said, what you're thinking, think of these things, do these things. So out of Philippians 4, 8, and this I think was quoted by Vicky the other day. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. Because when you do, you are helping your hy hel uh, hypothalamus to produce the correct uh, enzymes for your body like oxytocin etc and endorphins etc it's scripture out of proverbs says guard your heart remember it's the heart not the head it's what goes into the heart the hurts of the heart with all diligence for from it spring it flows springs of life Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Two Corinthians ten five, overthrowing arguments and every high thing that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, taking captive every thought into the uh, uh, taking captive every thought into the obedience of Christ. So you have a negative thought about. Oh, I'm so stupid. Why? Why did I do that thing? That negative thought needs to be taken captive because it will impact your body. The mind of the flesh is death. The mind of the spirit is life and peace. So whenever you're thinking about yourself, I'm stupid, I'm bad. That's, that's of the flesh. And we need to be flowing from the spirit. Romans 12, 2. So this is the Lord encouraging us to renew our minds. It's the renewing of the mind process that often we uh, misunderstand how to do it because of this free will. And the sanctification that needs to happen from the past hurts and pains. And do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. For you to prove what is the good and well-pleasing and perfect will of God. That word prove is the word dokimezo, 
to see whether a thing is genuine or not. And you see, because I've walked the walk of my asthma, I know I can say to people, listen, I know this can be healed. There is nothing that is impossible to be healed. I'm going to, yeah, before I share this, I want to share this concept here. We have a man and he has been diagnosed as an alcoholic. So in the body, in the lower brain, there is this desire for alcohol. Generally, when people are alcoholic, alcoholic, it's because they were trying to numb a pain. But then the, it's no longer the numbing of the pain that's the problem. It now becomes something that the body starts craving. So you've got a double whammy. Now, we can, by will choice, decide not to drink. But the body will be craving in some deep level this need for alcohol. And we can live a complete alcohol life, but all the time, hmm? free life. Free life. Uh, there's alcohol free life. Um, only by choice. But the heart is still retaining. And so you are always having to fight. You are not totally free. What we need to do is you got to get into that place where the pain was. So that the heart is purified and then you no longer have the struggle of trying to manage the cravings of the flesh. So we can do this. And this is what tends to happen a lot of the times. We're going to just do it with our mind. But I believe there is a more excellent way where we can heal the core of our person. We can go to those places of pain, bring sanctification and healing that we can fulfill the scripture. It's for freedom. Christ has set us free. No longer to be yoked. That, I think, is in Galatians 5 at the beginning of 4. So look at the diagram here. We've got this working memory, this upper brain. And it's 10% of our responses. And it's the part that knows we are a new creation. We can know all the scriptures. I'm a new creation. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But we have this lower subconscious, unconscious brain and the memories that are stored in the body from the hurts, the abuses, whatever. And that is 90% of our responses. And that's the part that needs to be renewed. Hence, I opened this talk with this. It's all in the mind. But which part? Is it the top part? Or is it the bottom part? This is where healing and sanctification needs to take place. And when we begin to understand this, that's why we can find, I know all these things, and then still find I do wrong things. It's because the heart is not purified. But the way to look at this is when these things are revealed to us. So we find we respond in a inappropriate way. So we're talking to somebody and we get all angry and cross and we're starting to shout. We mustn't be into condemnation of ourselves. We must go to the Lord and say, oh, this is in my heart. It needs to be renewed. Come, Lord. Come change me. One of the scriptures that I've used in my life is Psalm 50, 50, 10, 51, 10. 51. But, yeah. Creating me a pure heart, O oh Lord. 
renew a right spirit within me. So here's the question, what do you think? How does this affect your personal growth? Your view of others? Your ministry of helping others? So when people come to me and they say, I've got a condition, be it uh, anorexia, be it uh, OCD, uh, compulsive disorder, be it uh, uh, emotional unbalanced personality, or the old, um, oh, I can't remember the correct word anymore. Anyhow, these, these, all these medical conditions that we have, I'm immediately going back to what is gone on in the heart. And using the research of Dr. Wright, Dr. Stradum, you can quickly pinpoint where the possible cause of pain is. And you can, as Dr. Wright, Apostle Wright did with that woman, he said, is this about this? And she could admit it. He led her through prayer and she got healed. Praise the Lord. These are the three books that I've been quoting from today. A More Excellent Way, Healing. This is available on the internet, download for free. And then Dr. Caroline Leaf, Switch on Your Brain. Thank you.